it, folks. Steve has an outstanding newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website, at TFNN. You're going to newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side. You just hit that button. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months for $6.95, which is a savings of about uh, $199 or 22%. And one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Nice to be with you, Tom. How are you today? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Doing doing great. Hey, we've got a lot of fast runners born here in the United States. I don't know if you've been watching. I'm sure oh. you've been probably watching the Olympics. Yes. That was that was that something else? What five one hundredths of a second, right? Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. That and even was. when you take a look at the photo finish, it's almost hard to figure out who really won. Um, you know what you I know. thought was really cool? And you know, because you know the the, the man himself, Lyles, right? Is that his name? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And, you know, you know, folks, I mean, if you saw him, okay, you know, it's entertainment, too. Oh, for sure. But it was yeah. so cool. I saw the interview afterwards, man, and the interview afterwards, he was humble, man. I mean, he said, he said to the Jamaican, man, I think he got me on the lean. And, he, and, yeah. and, he, and I wasn't expecting to hear him say, ah, I guess I got to, you know, pull back on my ego. He said something like, it was really cool, man. It was like, wow, OK, this is part of his deal. Do you know what I mean? But, well, he, he, yeah, but he, I think he got a good night's sleep and he came back and I saw he was doing an interview because I think the 200 is being run this evening. Yes. And so in that one, he, he had the two guys sitting next to him. And I think he was just thinking, I'm going to blow you guys away. Good. They're all fat. They're all so fast. No, you know, they are, man. They, and even the women. The women are great. So, yeah. Uh, and the swimming. One, one, just, what are we going to do when the Olympus are gone? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think it's called baseball. I yeah. Think it, it, exactly. we back to the, well, uh, the maybe it's just called the baseball. market. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. What a, what a market we have. So uh, what I would do is just kind of give the folks a feel for what it is that I'm looking at. Cool. And, and the very first thing that I pull up on my screen here is the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. Um, Tom, folks, the way that the oscillator, an oscillator is the difference between two things. In this case here, we're taking a look at two things being utilizing the advanced decline line and looking at the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. That creates the oscillator. That is in panel number two. Now, this oscillator has some very cool, unique properties to it. One, it helps us to um, objectively identify overbought and oversold conditions. Right now, or at least as of about a half an hour ago, the reading was minus 185. Tom, as soon as we get down to minus 150, and it depends upon the close, not where we're at at 333, but let's assume we do close below minus 150, then the New York Stock Exchange will be in an oversold condition. Now, what's cool about this chart is we can take a look at how price behaved when we were last down here. In the last three instances of being down below minus 150, and folks, we can get lower than minus 150. This just puts us into oversold condition. This tells us that we should expect and anticipate a bounce. It doesn't say that it begins at 334 in the afternoon. It can, but it doesn't say that. So here, if we take a look at the last four times, last the three other times down here, what we got was we got an immediate, and we'll take a look at the top portion of the screen along with this third panel. We immediately moved out of there. In fact, we moved to higher highs the last couple of times down here. Will we do that again this time? I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that we're in an oversold condition. That condition needs to be worked off. Sometimes it's an immediate move out of here. Other times, if you take a look at some of these uh, green diagonal lines, like on price back here in uh, November of 2023, the way that that oversold condition was resolved was price moved lower with a higher advanced decline oscillator reading. And I'm sure if we go back and we take a look at the charts back in uh, October of 2023, we'll see one of my signals that identifies a bottom, maybe a TD9 count, maybe Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So I want folks to understand that we are in an oversold condition. This doesn't mean that this is the bottom. We add absolutely uh, go to new all-time highs, but that is a possibility. So that was the first thing. The second thing, and you can also use this, Tom, to identify an oversold market, is when the spot VIX index, and if you take a look at my chart here, yes. it would be the second line item. And again, this is about a half an hour ago. It was printed out at 34.18. If you go down just a little bit further below, you'll see the August 2024 to April 2025 futures contract for the VIX. They're all trading below that number. We're in backwardation out there. That has to get resolved. This tells us 
that the uh, that that all of what we're seeing here is more of a short term move, not a longer term move. If we were looking at a longer term move, now there's effort. A lot of people say this must be an indication that we're going to move into recession. I would say that's not what this is telling us at all. If the forward future contracts were up above the uh, spot VIX, then I could buy into that. So this just tells me we're in a real short-term emotional time period, and this condition also will end up being worked off out there. So I see the markets being oversold, enough for us to start paying attention to trying to identify bottom patterns. On the daily time frame, I don't have anything as we speak right now. If I go down to my next lowest time period, Tom, it would be a five-hour chart. If you want to take a look at the ES Mini, the NQ, lower left is the uh, Dow, lower right is Russell 2000. You've got TD9 count bottoms that formed this morning for three of them, the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow. No, I'm, I'm sorry, in the Russell 2000, the Dow did not. So earlier when, when, uh, when you came on, you know, you talked about this nice rally we had in the NQ, 938 points. That's a heck of a rally. It is. And like you said, <laughs> and like you said, and it's still trading down, right? Yes. <laughs> so to try to understand why did price stop where it did, I can determine that by taking a look at the charts here. You had the bottom pattern in the five-hour time frame chart for the NQ, and that's what I'm focused on right now. And price rallied right up into that red oscillator and change line and the bottom of its profile. So what I want to share with folks is tonight you want to watch that 18 to 23 level. If you see price trading above that, we should see a further rally in the NQ. 18.513 would be a price target. 18.804 would be an area. Right now, we did have price, after it got to that resistance level on the five-hour chart, I switched over to the 30-minute time frame chart. And on the 30-minute time frame chart, what we saw was price was pulling back. And it was pulling back to that red oscillator and change line. That is a, a key level of support. If price were to close below that, that would tell me we had lower, like in the NQ, 17.821, and the ES, 51.86, inside the uh, Dow, uh, really about where it's trading right now. Now, I'm looking at a different screen, and I can see that the NQ, which has driven the market lower, has hit that line, uh, which right now is printed at 17.911, and it has bounced off of that. That shows some potential, Tom, that what we're going to see here is a further rally overnight. So we're in absolute oversold conditions, whether we use the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator, whether we look at the spot volatility versus its forward futures contracts. And right now it's a matter of that 30-minute time frame chart. Does it hold support? And if it does, I think we see a further rally this evening. And folks, great time to get Steve's newsletter. Get over. You're, you're on the website right now. Hit that button, Master in Probability. You're going to get that newsletter, bottom line, and we trade the heck out of it. <laughs> Steve Rhodes, you have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take care. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.